right. Well, thank you, everyone, for being here. and Welcome to Book People. Uh, I'm Steve Burkew, one of the owners of the store, and I'm very happy to have you here. And I'm particularly happy to be able to introduce Richard Parker this evening uh, to talk a little bit about his book, uh, The Lone Star Nation. Uh, Richard, in case you guys don't know this, is uh, uh, an award-winning journalist. He's written works uh, that have appeared in the New York Times, the New Republic, the Columbia Journalism Review, many other prominent newspapers and journals across the country. He's written about wars and conflicts in places like Mexico, our neighbor, and Iraq, and Kosovo. And now he's come to an even more dangerous place to write, and that's Texas. <laughs> so the question, I guess, that's posed here is, is Texas going to be the California of the 21st century? Will the sixth migration into this state truly transform our state into something that will lead the nation as we go forth into this, this century? And will Texas still be Texas when this is all said and done? So without further ado, I'd like to present Richard to try and talk to you about those issues. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you for coming out on a Tuesday night. Uh, special thanks to Steve and the crew at Book People, which is the world's greatest bookstore. Um, thanks to C-SPAN, my publisher in New York, uh, Claiborne Hancock at Pegasus Books, and a few people here in the audience. I want to thank Ginger Lowry. Uh, she was instrumental in helping Steve and I put this together. Uh, one of the people this book is dedicated to, actually two are in the audience, Isabel Parker and her mother, Laurie, uh, and a couple of friends we see here as well. Thanks for coming, uh, everyone. So what I'd like to do is just give you a, an overview, essentially, of the book, and then take a few questions, and then I'll read for about 10 minutes. I promise I won't inflict 30 minutes of reading on you. Um, but. The premise of the book is that a great deal that we think we know about Texas is not quite right. I would even go so far as to say some of it is increasingly absolutely wrong. And the reason is when you look at the history of Texas for a long time, it's been framed uh, about the history of the land. Um, there have been some wonderful historians, T.R. Fehrenbach comes to mind in his huge volume, uh, Lone Star, for which this is partially named. And in it, he argues that the landscape of Texas was so vast and so immutable that it actually forged a special group of people who could survive in it. Uh, he was probably right. When you look back at the 17th and 18th and 19th centuries, there's a great deal of truth in that. But something really important has happened at the beginning of the 21st century that Fehrenbach, who passed away last year, could never have foreseen. He wrote his book in 1969, I believe, the first edition. And that is that Texas is filling up with people. And that's something that's never happened in the 16 or 17,000 years of human history in Texas. And that, to me, is a really big deal. That's a big event. Um, when you think about Texas, it's about the size of France. It's around 700,000 square miles or so. But the core of Texas, what we call today the Texas Triangle, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, San Antonio, Houston, that area is where 80% of Texans will live in this century. And that area is only about 60,000 square miles. Can I just get sure. OK. And so what we're seeing is 80% of the, of the state's population living in just a tiny fraction of its land mass. To give you a, a point of comparison, the population densities in the Texas Triangle by around the middle of just this century, which is about 35 years from now, will resemble the density of the New York-Boston corridor or uh, the population between Los Angeles and San Diego. We're talking about population densities that used to be measured in dozens of people per square mile, then hundreds becoming thousands and tens of thousands of people. That's a very different Texas than even the one I grew up in uh, 50 years ago. So that said, I think there are some really great reasons to be bullish and optimistic about Texas. There are also some reasons that Texans who care about Texas should have real concerns, too. 
what is there to be bullish about? Well, we are almost the biggest in landmass, and we may become the biggest in population. There is an outside chance that Texas will exceed California as the largest and most populous state in the Union by around 2050. We have a booming economy uh, compared to much of the rest of the United States and certainly much of the rest of, um, of uh, Europe and parts of Asia. In fact, if current trends generally hold, Texas will go from being the 14th largest economy in the world to the fourth largest. It will, take, it will overtake Germany by the middle of this century. To take that a step further, the amount of economic activity in Texas will mean the difference between America remaining the number one economy in the, in the world uh, and China remaining the number two economy in the world. Um, third, uh, Texas embodies the kind of ideals about opportunity and individualism that are just extreme versions of being an American. Uh, Molly Ivins said that once, and she said it far better than I did. Uh, Texas is just like America, just more so. As a result, uh, we have special, in my view, responsibilities to keep it that way. And I see three very important uh, threats. I see, I see them sort of like uh, thunderclouds on the horizon on a sunny day. One of these um, is very obvious to most of us who were here through the most recent drought. There is not enough water. We barely have enough water to sustain 27 million people right now. How we sustain 50 million people is very unclear to me, particularly when there is growing scientific evidence that climate change is actually lessening the amount of rainfall that actually hits the dirt in Texas and the rest of the American Southwest. The boom today in Texas does not run on oil. It runs on water. Second thing that is a big challenge is that uh, we are witnessing now, Ron Marks is back there, character in the book, um, we're witnessing now uh, the birth essentially of a new Texas majority. For pretty well 200 years, uh, Texas has had an Anglo majority. They came, they came flooding into Texas in the early part of the 19th century, and soon there were more Anglos in Texas than there were Mexicans and Native Americans combined. That is now being precisely reversed. As of last year, 2014, Hispanics were the largest ethnic group in Texas. Becoming an outright majority is not something that's going to happen in our children's lifetime. It will happen almost any year now. Uh, the population projections for Texas, whether it's the outright growth or the majority, uh, the new majority that's emerging, are constantly being outstripped by events. What we have not solved for the new Texas majority is the question of upward mobility. Uh, Hispanics are graduating in Texas from high school at the same rate, by and large, as Anglos or African Americans. However, they're not going on to college at the same rate. And the big reason is money. And without going on to four-year schools or specialty training, um, they are going to miss out on the opportunity to as much as double their incomes. This could mean that if we don't solve this question of upper mobility, which is not a hand out, but a leg up, um, we could wind up uh, with a majority that is not upwardly mobile, whose kids do not do better than they do, and who will not generate enough income to keep the economy going. They won't buy the durable consumer goods, they won't be able to afford to buy homes, and they won't be able to afford to send their kids to college. That means they won't be able to sustain the tax base either. That's a really daunting thing because a prosperous Texas could become a very poor Texas. And that could happen within 30 years. Lastly, there is a question, there's a political question here. <clears throat> and that is, does Texas expand the democracy or do we limit it? Uh, a lot of people have, have uh, criticized me uh, to when I talk about politics in the book by saying, look, 2014, the Republicans swept Texas. Isn't that proof positive that nothing is really going to change? I had this very question this morning. I was on the radio in Ireland, in fact. And the answer is no. When you have an election in which only uh, one in three registered voters, 
fewer than five